happy with this or in the world you need to go out of space and learn how to know your planet and the whole universe as well. Sit back, relax, and listen attentively with our discussion. Our first quarter is all about current science. Today we will start identifying the different theories in the origin of the universe and the origin of the solar system. To start with, let's define first what is the universe. According to a reliable source, the universe is everything we can touch, feel, sense, measure, or detect. It includes living things, planets, stars, galaxies, dust clouds, light, and even time. Before the birth of the universe, time, space, and matter did not exist. The universe contains billions of galaxies, and each contains millions or billions of stars. The space between the stars and galaxies is largely empty. However, even places far from the stars and the planets contain scattered particles of dust or a few hydrogen atoms per cubic centimeter. The space is also, is also filled with radiation, magnetic fields, and high energy particles. Class, cosmology is a branch of science that deals with the study of the universe. My question now is, have you ever wondered how our universe was created? Maybe some of you will look into the perspective of Catholic teaching, and some of you will use scientific explanation about this. According to the book of Genesis, God created the heaven and the earth. And we don't have any violent reaction with this because it is our common faith. If the Catholic faith teaches us about the creation written in the book of Genesis, the Hindu religion is the book of Rig Veda. They believe in the idea of oscillating universe wherein the universe came from a single point and soon will end into a single point again. This idea can relate to the concept of pendulum, where it moves from left to the right and right to the left. At first, the universe expanded and eventually collapsed, and the cycle will continue. Based on the future class, the universe is just like an egg. So for Hindu, they call this cosmic egg or the Brahmana. It contains the whole universe expanded out a single concentrated point called Bindu and will eventually collapse again. Plus, these are the two explanations coming from the different books of different religions. Let's not proceed to the different philosophers and scientists that explain the origin of the universe based on their different claims. First on the list is Anaxagoras. He believed on the idea of primordial universe, that according to him, the universe were existing billion years ago. He believed that even if he claimed that the universe were already existing before, it is all dependent on our own minds on how we will understand and on how we will explain the origin of the universe. Next, we have Leucippus and Democritus. These two great philosophers believe that nothing exists except atoms and empty space. They claim that all things in the universe are composed of tiny particles of matter called atoms. We also have Aristotle and Ptolemy. They both propose a geocentric universe. When we see geo, this means earth, and centric means center. With this, Aristotle and Ptolemy said that the planet Earth is the center of the universe, wherein other planets and even the sun revolve around it. But here comes Nicholas Copernicus, he disagreed with the idea of Aristotle and Ptolemy. He claimed that the real center of the universe is the sun. He called this theory as the heliocentric theory. We also have Giordano Bruno. 
he is known for his cosmological theories, which conceptually extended the then novel Copernican model. He proposed that the stars were distant suns surrounded by their own planets, and he raised the possibility that these planets might foster life of their own, a philosophical position known as cosmic pluralism. That's why he insisted that the universe doesn't have center and the universe is infinite. Sir Isaac Newton said that matter on the large scale is uniformly distributed and the universe is gravitationally balanced but essentially unstable. We also have René Descartes. According to him, the vacuum of space was not empty, but rather filled with matter that swirled around in large and small vortices. This model involved a system of huge swirling ripples of fine matter producing what would later be called the gravitational effects. And lastly, we have Albert Einstein. He is known for his theory of general relativity. He added a cosmological constant to his general, general theory of relativity equations to counteract the dynamical effect of gravity, which would have caused the universe to collapse. After meeting some philosophers and scientists with their ideas and contribution to the origin of the universe, let's continue to identify modern theories on the origin of the universe. Class, for the Big Bang Theory, please watch the video Save in Your Flash Drive entitled Origin of the Universe 101. I hope you're done watching it. So let's proceed. Based on the video, in the Big Bang Theory, all matter in the universe was concentrated into a single incredibly tiny point. Big Bang Theory is the most acceptable theory because of the evidences that scientists discovered and observed. And let's see it one by one. First evidence is that galaxies are moving away. In 1924, Edwin Hubble found that stars are not uniformly distributed in space. Instead, they gather together forming clusters called galaxies. By determining the velocities of the galaxies based on the amount of light they emit, he found out that nearly all galaxies were moving away with the distance between distant galaxies increasing with time. If it was expanding, they must have been closer together in the past and may even come from a single point in the beginning. Next, we have the second evidence, which is the presence of the cosmic microwave background. In 1960, Arnold Penzias and Robert Wilson discovered a background radio emission coming from the very direction in the sky. This rotation was speculated as the remnant energy left over from the formation of the universe. This energy probably dates back to the recombination era when atoms were just beginning to form. The discovery of CMB placed an end to this devastating theory of the universe. And the last evidence we have is the abundance of light elements. Elements like helium, hydrogen, with trace amounts of lithium and beryllium found in the observable universe agrees with the hypothesis of the Big Bang theory. Their abundance is checked from the spectra of the oldest stars and gas clouds. The ratios of these light elements match with what was expected from the Big Bang nucleus synthesis. In 1948, English astronomers Fred Hoyle 
Thomas Cole and Herman Grenoble proposed the steady state theory that predicted a universe that expanded but did not change density. Matter was inserted into the universe as it expands in order to maintain a constant density. Again, when this is steady state theory, it believes that the universe expanded but did not change its density. Big Bang Theory and Steady State Theory have in common, and that is they both believe in expanding universe. But Steady State Theory was rejected due to some evidences. And what are these evidences? First one, we have the radio telescope observations. A radio telescope is a specialist antenna and radio receiver used to receive radio waves from astronomical radio sources in the sky. Second evidence is the discovery of quasars. A quasar is a massive and extremely remote celestial object emitting exceptionally large amount of energy and typically having a star-like image in a, in, a, in a telescope. It has been suggested that quasars contain massive black holes and they represent a stage in the, in the evolution of some galaxies. And the last evidence is that we check the truly steady state truly is the cosmic microwave background. Again, when we see CMB, these are the leftover of the Big Bang Theory. Aside from Big Bang Theory and steady state theory, we also have the oscillating universe. The oscillating universe, again, can be connected to the idea of pendulum. This is a cosmological model that combines both the Big Bang and the Big Crunch as part of a cyclical event. This is just like a cycle wherein if we go back to the explanation of the Big Bang, the universe came from a small point and time from when the Big Crunch will come and the universe will go back to the small point. We also have the inflationary universe. It is proposed by Alan Bill. And the inflationary theory proposed a period of exponential expansion of the universe prior to the more gradual Big Bang expansion. During this rapid expansion, the energy density of the universe was dominated by a cosmological constant type of vacuum energy. Later on, the energy decayed to produce the matter and radiation which filled up the universe. We also have the cyclic model by Paul Stinhart and Neil Ford. It involves the stationary universe expanding and contracting cycles. We also have the multiverse by Andre Linde, and this truly sees that the universe is just one of many bubbles that grew as part of the multiverse. So class, basically, we learn the different theories on the origin of the universe based on two points of views. First, based on the perspective of religion, and the other is based on scientific explanation. Class, we're done discussing the universe. Now let's understand how the solar system came 